the Spirit of God and the United States of America into the Republic of the Saints, one of each in the this book, the Religion of the Thank you. Uh, next, there's a little roll call. Yeah. People here in high fashion. Yeah, look at I can see you here, uh, Senator Brewster. Here. Thank you. I got a board. I see you here. I see our lieutenant governor elect here, Austin Davis, here in the line. Uh, right there. Okay. Uh, Representative Zborski. Present. Done? Present. Can you hear me? Yeah, thanks. Uh, Thank Jay. you. Yeah, here. Stephanie here and Ali Doyle. I'm here. And Michelle's made up uh, This is kind of a bittersweet meet meeting. <clears throat> the, the, the sweeter thing we have our lieutenant governor elect Austin Davis with us. <laughs> Outcomes are very well recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and just would like to thank the members for, for all their hard work to improve public transit here. Uh, in the, in, in the county, it's been a true honor to work with each and every one of you. And, uh, I look forward to continuing to be a, a strong advocate for public transit and a bigger role. That's the lot been going forward. We look forward to working towards the future. Thank you. Uh, and just another note to congratulate on NAS on winning our C suite uh, award from the Division of Unity. <laughs> Uh, okay, so we'll attack, but we'll go to the approval of the minutes of the October 28th meeting. I have a motion. So moved. Second. Thank you. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, that means we're approved. Then we'll hear from our chief executive officer. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, and good morning, everyone. Good to see everybody. May I please have a moment of silence for the following retired employees who have passed away since we last met? Operators Faith Baco, Herman Martin, Carl Patrick Jr., Leon Harvard, James Pearls, Russell Pugh Jr., and Wayne Wilson. Assistant Manager of Maintenance and Service, Nancy Smith. Director of Shop Maintenance, Support, and Training, Davis Telegrand. Trainman Melvin Gibson, and Building Maintainer, John Phillips. Thank you. Last week, we held a ceremonial groundbreaking event, for phase one of our upcoming bus rapid transit project. The VR team will enhance safety in the corridor by improving crosswalks, sidewalks, hiding protected bike lanes, and eliminating the issue in Oakland where our buses travel against four lanes of traffic. So will help improve reliability to keep our buses from stacking up one behind another and then generating that big gap. So bolster service efficiency, allowing us to save hours and then reinvest that service throughout our county. This will bring more amenities to riders in the corridor, and this will help lay the foundation for investment and development opportunities close to reliable public transit in uptown. BRT represents an investment in our community, improving the lives of thousands of riders traveling to and through several of our most dense, vibrant, and growing neighborhoods. Today, we're asking our board to take the next step in the project by opening a public comment period on the transitional BRT service center. Although we do not plan to implement changes until next year, this could not come at a better time. BRT will require fewer operating hours, which we will use to further bolster our extra board, potentially add service elsewhere in the county, and this will allow us to maintain service reliability during construction. I know some of you are registered today and here today to talk about service, and I want to let you know we are exploring as many avenues as we can to increase hiring since there's a direct correlation between the number of operators we have and the hours which we have reduced in the last three years. Since the pandemic, we've reduced service by 10% and we're working with 9% fewer operators. 
Now, I do want to clarify in the PRT budget, you see a line item for a number of operators, and that line item is 1200. We have not had 1200 active operators for many years. So the question is, why do we keep it there? We always have a bit of uh, a wiggle room because when we have a class of student operators, they must be in the budget somewhere. So if we have 20 students in, that's 20 operators who are not in service. So when we're looking at service, what do we look at? We look at how many operators we actually have total in each division, and then we work on how much service that can support. If we have 1,070 operators and they're distributed across our divisions, we work on trying to build enough service to cover 1,070 positions. So while it's 1,200 in the budget, we currently have 1,070 filled. Again, this allows us to have students. This also accommodates folks who might be on long-term disability. This accommodates folks who might be out on family medical leave. This accommodates folks who are uh, in different levels of transition out of being operators. Uh, this accommodates folks who might be out on the workers' comp. So I want to stress that our budget has a number in it. The number that we look at is how many active operators are available to us, and we build service to that. And that active number also includes our extra board. Today, our board will consider a resolution to approve a new collective bargaining agreement with our major union, Amalgamated Transit Union 85 and 85A. This is also a step to retain employees and ensure long-term stability for the system. The new CBA includes increases in 12.75% over four years, increasing our starting rate to nearly $25 an hour, and the max rate is at or over $38 an hour for bus operators. Keeping our employees at some of the highest paid in the nation, this is an attractive pay scale to attract workers. Once the agreement, agreement is finalized, we plan to continue our discussions about additional opportunities to attract new employees that help make a tough job more attractive to prospective employees. We know looking at our information that once folks come to work here, they stay with us. We have a low attrition rate, and even in the first year, a lot of people choose to stick it out for this job. So our challenge is to increase the pool of folks who are coming in and make them more attractive to bring in the solid quality operators that you've come to use to, to appreciate on your service every day. These efforts, I hope, show our steadfast commitment to our employees and our riders, and we will continue to find ways to improve and grow our system for everyone's benefit. Now, it's our last meeting of the year, so I want to wish you happy Thanksgiving, happy Hanukkah, happy Christmas, happy Kwanzaa, happy Festivus. There are other holidays I'm missing. Happy New Year. Whatever holiday you have, enjoy it and enjoy those people around you. Unless there's any questions, Mr. Chair, that concludes my comments. Thank you. Any questions? Any questions from virtual board members? Okay. Thank you, Jessica. Yes, okay. Sam, we're here for a report of the Performance and Oversight Committee from Sheldon Manning. Would you care? Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. The Performance Oversight Committee met last week, and I have four resolutions for your consideration. The committee first reviewed six procurement items and determined the bids to be in accordance with PRT's procurement policies and procedures. The price was fair and reasonable. The bidders to be responsible and the bids responsive. The Performance Oversight Committee recommends the award of bids listed in the resolution for the total amount of approximately $1.8 billion. My fellow members, I respectfully request the board approve this resolution. May I have a motion? So, is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Yeah, it carries. The second resolution is to authorize PRT to enter into an agreement with Commercial Consulting, which submitted the highest rated proposal to provide drug and alcohol compliance program services. This resolution is for a three-year period with up to an additional two years at the sole discretion of PRT. The Performance Service Light Committee recommends entering into an agreement with commercial consulting for total not to exceed amount of $1,331,001.68. My fellow members, I respectfully request the board to approve this resolution. May I have a motion? So moved. I'll take a second to do it. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Carries. The next resolution is to authorize PRT to enter into an agreement with the Siegel Company Incorporated, which submitted the highest rated proposal to provide compensation market study services. This resolution is for a three-year period with up to an additional two years at the sole discretion of PRT. The Performance Oversight Committee recommends entering into an agreement with the Siegel Company Incorporated for a total not to exceed amount of $270,000. My fellow members, I respectfully request the board approve this resolution. Thank you. 
Do a second. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. The final resolution is to authorize PRT to enter into construction contracts with contractors that have submitted the highest rated proposals for the South Coast Village Maintenance Building Paint Booth Upgrades Project. The Performance Oversight Committee recommends after entering into contracts with Masai's Construction Company in the amount of $4,455,555 for the general construction contract. Aranyak Sheet Metal Incorporated in the amount of $910,000 for the mechanical construction contract. Wheels Mechanical Contracting and Supplier Incorporated in the amount of $293,500 for the plumbing construction contract. And Merit Electrical Group Incorporated in the amount of $372,363 for the electrical contract, subject to completing all pre award requirements. My fellow members, I respectfully request the board approve this resolution. Yeah, okay. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Mr. Chair, also at the meeting that you can receive an update of the 2022 efforts, highlights, and current initiatives of the Rail Transit Safety Review Program. Yeah, we'll Thank you, Chappelle. Thank you, We'll move on to the report of the Select uh, Swaying State Board Relations Committee from Chair John Stay. Good morning, Mr. Uh, Chairman, fellow board members, and stakeholders. The Planning and Stakeholders Relations Committee, committee met last week. I have a few items for the board. First, Director of Planning Service Development, Amy Silverman, and Section Manager of Service Development, Ellen Newman, provided a presentation on the draft Title VI analysis for proposed BRT major changes. Construction on the downtown loop is expected to begin in early as spring 2023 before moving into the uptown and Oakland portions of the project. Route 61D, 71A, 71C, and 71D will end in Oakland to improve reliability and keep those routes from entering downtown traffic affected by downtown loop construction. The P3 route will terminate in Wilkinsburg and will also be extended to downtown and will have Saturday and Sunday service. The PRT conducted a Title VI study to determine if these would negatively affect low income or minority residents. Most of the changes were found to have negative impact to those communities. The extension of the P3 and additional weekend service will be a positive change. Mitigating efforts, including B uh, BRT improvements, restocking the extra board of available drivers to cover routes and restoring trips on previously reduced routes will help even out the, out the balance. The next step of the project is to enter into public comment period and award construction uh, before, uh, before construction begins. Uh, second, I have a resolution requesting the authorization to proceed to a public comment period for the downtown uh, uptown Oakland BRT project related to the proposed major service changes. This resolution would authorize PRT to begin a public comment period from December 15th until February 1st for the changes detailed above. Included will be on the online only informational session plan for January 10th from 6 to 7 p.m. and three public hearings currently planned for January. Two of the hearings will be in person and online from 10 a.m. to noon and from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. And there will be a single online only session from 6 p.m. to 8. Mr. Chairman, I respectfully request approval of this resolution. I have a motion. Okay. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, the motion carries. Uh, th thank you. Um, the third item is Allegheny County Transit Council met on November 16th. Amy Silverman, Director of Planning and Service Development, presented the BRT project service changes and Title VI overview. Uh, the next regularly scheduled meeting is expected to be held on January 25th. And fourth, uh, Committee for Accessible Transportation met on November 3rd. The committee approved the application for a new member, Christine Hus Husinger, 
and Amy Silver, Director of Planning and Service Development, presented uh, the uh, final bus stop uh, design and rail plate. Uh, Philip St. Pierre, Director of Transit Scheduling, discussed the November service changes. Karen Hesch of Access introduced new staff, provided an update on the same day pilot program, uh, gave an update on ridership and driver recruitment and retention, and discussed the uh, new rider survey results. The next regularly scheduled council meeting is expected to uh, be held on February 2nd. Unless there's any questions, that concludes my report. Thank you. Thank you, John. Are there any questions? Okay, with that, we'll move on to the report of finance committee. Ms. Chair Anna Bort. Good morning, Chair and fellow board members. The finance committee met last week on November 10th, and the single agenda item we had this month was a report of the October financial results. It was reported that total operating income for the month of October was $278,360 below budget, primarily due to lower passenger revenue and access share drive revenue. Interest income was $169,042 above budget, which offset a portion of the passenger revenue shortfall. Total operating income for the fiscal year was $1.7 million below budget due to lower monthly, annual, and store value sales in passenger revenue, as well as lower access shared ride revenue. While PRT's total operating income is below budget, it is $1.65 million higher than last fiscal year. Total expenses for the month of October and year to date are below budget by $1.6 million and $17.6 million, respectively. Every expense category, other than access expense, was below budget for the fiscal year. Salary and wages, employee benefits, and purchase services are $5.4 million, $3.1 million, and $3.4 million below budget, respectively. Total subsidy for the month was $938,291 below budget, primarily due to lower state operating assistance. But for the fiscal year, total subsidy is $126,480 above budget. Finally, it was reported that PRT ended the month of October with approximately $136.4 million in cash reserves. Mr. Chairman, unless there are any other questions or comments, that concludes my report. Any questions? Okay, thank you. And with that, we'll move on to the report of the Technology Committee to the General Planning Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and fellow board members. Um, the Technology Committee did meet on Thursday, November 10th, and I have two items to bring forward to the board. Uh, the first big interview of bid for purchase for Cisco Wi Fi and switch networking equipment. The committee determined to bid be in accordance with the PRT procurement policies and procedures, and the prices to be fair and reasonable. The Technology Committee recommends the award of this contract for CDO networking and solution bills to be in the amount of $179,902.61 for a three year period. With that, I respectfully request approval of this. I may have a motion. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, the motion carries. Thank you very much. The second item is a resolution to authorize the PRT to extend an event in agreement with NCOWS Transportation for hosted voice interactive response system and to more phone support for the customer service area. The resolution is to authorize the extra. That to authorize the exercise in the first option here of the contract, extending the contract to December of 2023, and to authorize the increase the total not to exceed an amount uh, by $115,998. So, with that, the Technology Committee recommends approval of this resolution as presented with a total not to exceed amount on the contract of $1,269,567. Uh, with that, I request my fellow board members approve this resolution. I have a motion. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, the carries. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. I think you're part of Thanks, Dan. Okay. In addition, we have a couple of new business items. <clears throat> First, is a resolution to approve the RFI of the terms of the collective bargaining agreements for both ways of time. PRT previous collective bargaining agreements for the nominated transit and local EB5 extra file members. Third level supervisor both expired on the 30th of this year, and uh, both PRT and the local have engaged in negotiations concerning terms and conditions of new collective bargaining agreements. As a remedy to all of these efforts, the parties have reached proposed terms and conditions of two new collective bargaining agreements. 
terms and conditions were recently approved and ratified by local 85 members. The resolution before us today is to approve and ratify the terms and conditions of the two collective bargaining agreements with local 85 and to authorize our personnel to finalize and execute the series on behalf of the PRC. Those terms and conditions include a four year agreement with annual rate increases and change to third and working disciplinary rules for more approved detail than the tenant settlement settlement agreements attached to the resolution of the building for rank and file employees and exhibit B before first level supervisors. I uh, therefore ask a motion to approve and ratify the proposed term of the Some of those. Oh, okay. Thank you. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Great, thanks. Okay, that's great. Uh, convention, uh, I want to announce the appointment of a board officer nominating committee. Each year, pursuant to our bylaws, the board elected to talk with the annual meeting in January. The back back candidate of that election, the nominating committee's first appointment to propose candidates for each board office, thereby appointing the nominating committee for 2023 board officer elections to be Stephanie Chair, Stephanie Tarmany's chair. Michelle's manager and Aunt Hannah Ward all of us graciously agreed to serve on the committee. The committee is requested to provide candidate recommendations to the board for each board of officer position. We presented on our annual meeting to be held on Friday, January 7th, at which time we will hold the office of election. Are there any questions? Okay, thanks. Okay, and with that, we're going to move on to public comment. And our first speaker, Ralph Williams, President of Allegheny County Transit Council. Uh, remind everybody of our time limits. Uh, to get up your All right, help. Are you ready for me? All right, great. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Ralph Williams. I'm the uh, president of the Allegheny County Transit Council. Mr. Kellerman, the CEO, uh, comes up, says we need to move people. Well, if we need to move people, we still have 200 operators sitting out that haven't. Uh, been brought back. We need the experience of these drivers to be brought back. And also, we need to make sure that we service these people that wait and wait and wait for hours and hours outside because we have to take um, routes out of service or there's something wrong here. What's wrong is, is that you members of the board have to work with this union and get these, these guys back, the 150, 200 some drivers that are still out because you either terminated them or the ones that are sitting out because you won't let them come back because of a policy uh, uh, violation. Please bring these experienced drivers back. Let them come back because we need them out there on the road. It's nice to have new drivers. It's great. I'm not, I'm not saying it's not good. But what I'm saying to you is, is that you need to bring back some of these, a lot of these experienced drivers. Get them back. Get them in here. Because I'm going to tell you, if it continues like this, people are not going to ride. And then they, they're going to lose confidence in the system. They're already not riding. They're already losing confidence in the system. I know some people in the car business. They told me that people are getting cars. And the first word coming out of their mouth when they ask them why they're buying a car, they said, I don't trust Port Authority. Or I don't trust PRT. So what's happening is, if this is the case, you guys need to really step it up and get some of these experienced drivers back. And in order to, to make the system better, and not have to cut routes and not have to drop, uh, you know, service. So uh, also, I want to congratulate Austin Davis, and I wanted to wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving and a happy, a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Bonnie Fan. Bonnie. Bonnie. Bonnie Fan. She's just a few minutes away. She's. Oh, she shows up before we get out of the third Sure, thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Board members of the Pittsburgh Regional Transit, and thank you for your service. As a former mayor in the city of Duquesne, Pennsylvania, and current member of Pittsburghers for Public Transit, transportation matters, especially when you're struggling to make ends meet. Getting to work or receiving proper health care is easier with good public transportation like buses, 
subways and libraries. The PRT should continue uh, to discover more ways to make safe, affordable transit possible for all people. Uh, according to um, Andre Pope, who gets up at 3.30 a.m. to prepare for his work, because the 59 Mon Valley is not available, he has to walk a half a mile to catch the 61C to Pittsburgh and walk again for another bus stop just to arrive at work in Edna around 7 a.m. With the uncertainty of punctual transportation, Mr. Pope is fearful of losing employment this winter. According to Sheba Allison of Pittsburgh, she downloaded the transportation app for timeliness. On several occasions, the bus appear on the app, but later disappear or never show up as if the bus operator turned the app off. During these times, she was forced to use ride sharing services. According to Yvette Gibson of Duquesne, she had to resign from Rivers Casino. Due to transportation issues, she was not able to get home. Some nights she had to work, walk 30 minutes to catch the bus by herself in unsafe areas. And to arrive in Duquesne around 1.40 a.m., Ms. Gibson was still required to walk home alone. These are just examples um, of individuals experiencing difficulties with the current PRT system, time, money, and health. Studies have found that commute time is the biggest indicator as whether or not a person can escape poverty. The longer you commute, the more likely you are to be late for important things, and you have less time for your family. Increasing public transit efficiency and reach can make a big impact. In addition, a household can save an average of $10,000 annually by taking public transit. Owning a car costs anywhere between $6,000 and $12,000 a year. It's not cheap. If we keep fares affordable, more people can access the transportation that they need. Following, furthermore, transportation barriers like long commutes and car problems can lead to missed doctor's appointments. If you're living in a low income, um, that expense is hard to schedule with your work. Um, a study showed that anywhere between 10% all the way up to 51% of people in some states have bad transportation as a barrier to health care. We need to do better. Thank you. Our next speaker is Lisa Gonzalez. He's in the hospital. Can I come in? Okay. Thank you. Uh, our next speaker then is Tira Collins. Tira Good morning. Are you, are you on? Okay. Go ahead. Good morning. Sorry, I couldn't be there. I had the flu. Um, my name's Tierra Collins. Um, I'm a I'm an advocate for this um my neighborhoods, and I'm also an advocate for Pittsburgh for public transit. I'm here today to talk about the buses that don't show up that I ride on a weekly basis, and it's and it's also buses that other people ride. The 17, the 83, the 61 C the 57. Those are buses that I have caught on a weekly basis. And I know for a fact that they don't show up because I've caught, been at the bus stop numerous times to catch them. The 17 is a bus that I catch on every Wednesday to go take my grandbaby to school on the north side. That bus sometimes shows up, sometimes it doesn't. It's not fair to me that I have to stand outside in the cold with my granddaughter and get her to school late because the bus isn't showing up. My granddaughter goes to, um, oh God, my brain is so messed up right now. She goes to school off of Pennsylvania Avenue on the north side. And she had, had, I catch the bus with her there weekly after her therapy appointment. And that bus shows up maybe once or twice. I'll, when I go every other week, it doesn't show up. Sometimes I have to catch the 16 or something and get off and then walk. I think it's approximately seven blocks with her. And she is in the fourth grade. Also, the 83, it doesn't show up during the day, at night. And it's not fair to the people who live on the hill. And then people say, oh, catch the 82 or the 81. 
the 82 or the 81 is not feasible for people to catch when they live up on Bedford Avenue. That's a lot of hills and a lot of walk. We have been supporting PRT for years, and I know I have. I've been riding PRT since I was about seven years old and riding since I was 10 by myself. So I know what the service has looked like over the years, and I see how bad the service is getting now. This is the worst our service has ever been, and it doesn't make sense for our service to be this bad. I know that you guys have let a lot of operators go to a decision that y'all chose to make. And I do mean that y'all chose to make because y'all didn't have to make it. Y'all chose to make that decision. It wasn't fair because those drivers were faithful to y'all and to us during the time of pandemic. So to let those drivers go after the pandemic was very un unacceptable. You guys need to figure out what you're going to do to get this service better. That 61C has to run. Thank you. Your time is up, but thank you. Next speaker is Ryan to the board and everyone in the room. I'm glad to be here because I don't mind me to hear part of what the public has to say. The last time I was here, I was on, uh, not here in person, but I was online. And I really had a hard time getting online because I called two days before um, that Friday last month. And um, the person said he was sending me the link they said they had already sent me a link, but they had been. Um, they said they sent it again. I still didn't get it. It wasn't even in my uh, spam or anywhere else. So that day of the meeting, I had to keep calling. And they said someone will pick up the line. No one picked up. So then I called back again. I had to wait on the lines for, for quite a while. And so, but I'm very determined because I feel like when you have something that is important to say, then you can't let other things get in the way. Or even if you have something else that's important to do, because uh, your words mean one thing, but your actions and what you do mean something else. It means um, you're totally committed to what you're promising or saying. So um, I just wanted to let you know that I think it's a good thing to be online. I think it's a good thing to be even better with this person. So that's why I'm in person to the I wanted to talk about um, a person I know named Kristen, and uh, she she goes over to the north side, not the north side, the south side, to um, where the Giant Eagles is and uh, Rainbow for shopping for her clothes. She has a three-year-old child that she takes with her, her son, and uh, she, she said, I asked her, well, how is it for you? And she said, well, I go off and catch the bus to go back home. That bus doesn't show up. Then I wait for the second bus. That doesn't show up. The third bus, that's the bus, I guess. That's the one that shows up. So I know it's hard because we don't have all the drivers that you need. And I agree with Tierra that um, that might not have been a good idea to let all the bus drivers go that you did because now it's affecting the schedule. Now it's affecting everyone that rides the bus. I hope that some of you, I don't know if you do, if you ever catch a bus. I'm talking to the board and the people behind me. But if you really do catch the bus, then you can see the difference. Um, I used to catch the bus before I was even a teenager um, when my brothers were sisters. And there were four of us. And we would catch the bus to go to the movies in East Liberty. And it was nice. And then we would wait because it was dark when we got home. That's when they had two movies and they had a little punching thing or whatever. So the buses were great back then, and there were plenty of them. And the town is so different. 
So thank you. Thank you. Uh, our next speaker is Michelle McMillan. I mean, everyone, the board, all the members, PBT members. My name is Michelle McMillan. I'm a community organizer and advocate for Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and I am very pleased to speak to you today. Um, I was very pleased when Laura asked me to go around the PBT members and people what they felt about Port Authority. And I also talked to your bus driver. This is all your bus drivers not happening. I apologize because I'm going ahead if you're members of the union are here, but I'm concerned. I've been riding the bus since I was 15 years old. 61C was going to be taken away and it was threatened. So I ran home to my city to fight with my community. 61C is not only a historical bus, but it means so much to us. Well, now I'm fighting for every single bus in Allegheny County. Your bus drivers, I'm fighting for them. They have a lot to say, and I want to be their advocate. They are not pleased with the board members' decision. They are not happy with why they had to be dismissed. And I want to know everyone else who received COVID pay, why didn't your dedicated bus drivers receive COVID pay? I'm not here to be mean. I'm not here to be spiteful. But right is right and wrong is wrong. You're not giving them what they need. I need that bus. I don't drive. I need the bus, whether I go from Allegheny County, South Side, North Side, East Side, West Side, I need the bus to get where I got to go. I am a 66 year old great grandmother who sat outside in August with my two great grandchildren who came to visit me from North Carolina and we sat downtown from 8.30 to 11.30, 50, uh, 11.35 waiting on that 83. And I was disgusted. My babies were crying, Grandma, I'm hungry. Grandma, I got to go to the bathroom. But there was nowhere for me to take them to go to the bathroom. Everything was closed at 30 at night. Please, Port Authority, bring back your drivers. You brought back your supervisors, but what about your dedicated drivers up here that's been with you faithfully? They need extra pay. They need your attention. They need your help. I understand there's two bus drivers on this board, so you know what they're going through. You experience what they're going through. Please help us to help them. And I'm going to keep on advocating. And I'm going to keep on talking. And I'm going to bring their issues to you. I'm going to be their advocate. Thank you. Okay, the next speaker is Andrew Hussain. <clears throat> Can you hear me? Yep. Go ahead, Andrew. All right. Apologies for any uh, echo or background noise. Uh, emergency comfort stop for those that get the reference anyway so i wanted to point out that in addition to the driver shortages still being an issue for service that we also need to work on making these uh schedules for the run time for the buses for how long you advertise the route to take being more realistic because there's a lot of routes that the actual time it takes to drive the route does not match or ride the route does not match what is advertised. So we need to work on that. And ironically, it's uh, interesting that your uh, finance report to here this morning mentioned uh, an issue with less stored value being sold on the connect cards because my other thing that I was going to bring up is that you need to work with whoever's in charge of uh, keeping the list online updated because there's a lot of uh, out of date or even newer connect card machines that have been put in places that aren't actually on the online website list of uh, outlets and machines. And you might also want to, from time to time, consider checking in with uh, your connect card retail locations as well because I've also in the past month and a half went to three retail locations that had various issues with their uh, machines and connect card infrastructure. Especially important with this uh, 
low income fare pilot about to be launched by Port Authority and DHS. You know, we want people to be able to load their connect cards. People need to not only know where to go, but the retailers have to have working machines and equipment. So thank you for your time. Thank you. And our next speaker is Lauren Perkins from Casa Seven B. Are you on? She's on. She's on meeting. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Mi nombre es Laura Perkins. Estoy aquí otra vez para pedir la misma cosa que mis colegas pidieron el mes pasado y que yo pedí a ustedes hace dos meses, la accesibilidad al transporte público para nuestra comunidad latina. Tuvimos una reunión con varios empleados de PRT el 17 de junio hace cinco meses sobre este asunto. Y hasta la fecha nadie nos ha dado seguimiento para avisarnos cómo, um, um, cómo van los compromisos acordados en esa reunión. Específicamente ofrecí mi voz para grabar mensajes auditorías en las estaciones de trenes y los trenes en la línea roja. Nadie me ha contactado para ni inventar ni una excusa para la falta de comunicación. Una pregunta a los miembros del consejo presentes. A question to all of the board members present. Can you please raise your hand if you take public transit at least once a week? I'm actually looking at you and I don't see anyone raising your hand. But maybe there's a delay. I hope this isn't counting in my minutes trying to see your hands raised. Yes. Oh, it is. Okay, one. Okay. Quiero que esa persona imagine un escenario. Estás atrasado en llegar a su, tu primer día de trabajo. No tienes fondos para tomar un Uber y está nevando. Subes al bus y todos los anuncios han sido cambiados a otro idioma. El conductor no habla inglés. Además, han cambiado los protocolos de cómo pagar la tarifa. Encuentras la misma situación cuando bajas para, eh, a la estación de tren. ¿Cómo te sientes? Pero eres inteligente y sabes que hay un consejo del transporte público que se reúne cada mes. Una amiga te ayuda a registrarte para hacer comentarios públicos sobre tu experiencia. Ella también pide interpretación a inglés con más de un mes de antelación. Llegas a la reunión para pedir información en inglés y no hay intérprete. Alguien te dice, ah, estudié inglés en escuela secundaria, es escuela secundaria y entendí algunas palabras de tu testimonio. Y sabes que no te ent entendieron. ¿Cómo te sientes? Bienvenida. Por favor, les estoy rogando y dando aviso que por todo el año de, del año 2023 van a tener por lo menos una, un comentario público en español en cada reunión de este consejo. Denos interpretación en español para todo el contenido de la reunión y no solo los comentarios públicos. Yo tengo otro trabajo más importante como la, la separación de familias en el suroeste de Pensilvania y la discriminación de la policía contra nuestra comunidad que perder mi tiempo rogando mes tras mes para interpretación. Denos interpretación en esta reunión y en los trenes. Gracias. Thank you. Our next speaker is Danny Bonsky. Good morning. My name is Danny Bonsky. I am a staff member at Pittsburghers for Public Transit. Um, in my neighborhood, Bloomfield, there are three different routes to go to the Strip District, the 88, the 86, the 87. Um, since the June schedule changes, these buses have been coming at the same time. And what used to be a trip where riders could expect headways of every 10 minutes, buses are, all three buses are now arriving every 30 minutes. This leads to overcrowding at the stop in the Strip District. And the first bus that arrives after 30 minutes fills to capacity. So riders who needed that bus to get beyond downtown uh, are, um, are not able to make it to that destination. This is just one example of how poor scheduling has, practically speaking, reduced the amount of available service for riders and has made the transit experience worse. It has nothing to do with the worker shortfall and could be fixed tomorrow. This type of staff scheduling also makes it commonplace for riders to miss connections and are forced to wait for a full 30 minutes for the next bus to arrive. Schedules are not realistic because they do not accurately reflect run times. There are no benefits to Pittsburgh Regional Transit 
writing faster trends on the schedule than is actually possible, or that is actually happening. It harms the operators who feel pressure to forego their limited breaks, where they are chronically, programmatically 20 to 40 minutes behind schedule, and it harms the rider to only know that the bus will never arrive when it's scheduled to. DRT says that it's cut 10% of service from pre-pandemic levels, but the reality is far worse. It's just that the cuts are hidden from the schedule. In October, a transit center data analysis showed that one in five PRT trips, 20% are ghost buses that never arrived. We're now at the doorstep of winter. It's in the low 30s outside. We don't have the luxury to wait indefinitely at a stop for a bus that may never arrive. Transit riders and workers both can elect to leave the system, and under these circumstances, they do. They have. They will continue to until there's a baseline level of trust that's what's written in the schedule is possible is humane to the workforce, and is accurate reflection of the service that Pittsburgh Regional Transit is operating. Once a realistic schedule is in place, having a robust strategy to communicate in multiple languages, the occasional out-of-service transit and late service would go a long way to building back our system. I want to close by saying that our Latinx neighbors, who are disproportionately high users of PRT, deserve to fully participate in these board meetings by having Spanish interpretation throughout these proceedings. Many public agencies appreciate, even thank members for, of the public for taking the time to attend board meetings and share their thoughts. It's actually remarkable that the Latinx community members have still continued to show up time after time to share their experiences in these public proceedings, despite the extraordinary lack of access to the PRT at the board. That's all that I have today. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Vivi Sanchez Garcilla. Lady Sanchez Arcella. I'm Paul Lady Sanchez Arcella. Ernesto Estrada. Ernesto Estrada. Ernesto Estrada. And Richelle Medrana. So our Sally is, is, so Laura has her on the phone. Um, so I think you need to unmute Laura and you'll be able to hear our Sally. She was able to access it. Yeah, That's Laura's in control. Oh, Laura's in control. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Okay. Here's Araceli in my speakerphone. Dale, Araceli. Mi nombre es Araceli. Yo soy usuaria desde hace muchos años en la transportación pública. Tengo ya 18 años utilizando la transportación pública, el cual es que he venido viendo y escuchando ahorita en este momento que hay muchos problemas. Los problemas se siguen generando mucho más que antes. Y la transportación pública no ha mejorado. Yo soy usuaria del 77, el cual es que hay a veces que llega el bus, hay veces que no. Entonces, eso es mucho problema para llegar a nuestro trabajo el cual a veces se puede perder específicamente para el centro. Y también es que yo lo que quiero recalcar, recalcar es que como usuarios... Unmute her. Sorry. I'm sorry. Chair Lutner, can you please tell her we accidentally muted Laura to unmute herself, please? Okay, uh, apparently uh, we accidentally muted Laura. Eh, espera, Araceli, Araceli, ¿Sí? ellos por accidente um, quitaron mi micrófono. Um, ¿Puede regresar um, como 20, 30 segundos? I'm asking her to go back 20 to 30 seconds. Disculpa, okay. Araceli. Okay, okay. okay. dale. Sí, quiero recalcar que hay personas que los niños, que los mamás que tienen niños, eh, específicamente en este tiempo, tienen que esperar mucho tiempo con este frío para ir a una cita o para ir ellas a su trabajo, a personas de la tercera edad esperando con este frío también. Entonces, ustedes este, han venido dando un mensaje de bienvenida en sus bases. Yo creo que si dan ese servicio, ese mensaje de bienvenida, esto se debe de de dar esa bienvenida, porque muchas de las veces no hay bienvenida porque no hay la traducción, no hay la traducción en español, no hay la traducción en los diferentes idiomas. Yo creo que este, su visión como 
como usuarios públicos o como este, transportación pública deben de ver este, en todos los idiomas, ya que este, a lo largo de todos estos años ya Pittsburgh es multicultural. Entonces se debe de adaptar todos esos servicios y dar un buen servicio a la comunidad y también a las personas que vienen a visitar Pittsburgh para que ellos vean que hay un buen servicio público y no un mal servicio público. Creo que es, es mi mensaje. Muchas gracias por escuchar mi comentario. Gracias, Araceli. Gracias. Okay, thank you. Uh, our next speaker is Sakia Harris. Okay. Okay. Good morning. Uh, my name is Sakia Harris. I'm an everyday bus rider. Um, I'm here today to voice my concerns about BRT. Um, one is the poor customer service, the unreliable and unrealistic bus schedules, the cleanliness of the bus, and rerouting bus stops. Too many times I have sat back and said nothing to due to the norm of the treatment that customers cert that customers receive every day about PRT bus drivers. It's not fair to me, it's not fair to the public that we have to encounter such rude and nasty tones from PRT bus drivers. It saddens me that PRT bus drivers won't let a customer on due to not having the funds to afford the trip to where they need to go. We, the public, spend our last on a day bus pass, a weekly, a monthly, just for PRT not to show up and provide the service that has been provided for us for years due to unreliable bus schedule, bus times. Why should the public suffer? PRT bus drivers are still being paid regardless if the task is completed or not. Secondly, when there are parades, events, races, and construction taking place downtown and in other areas, bus stops get rerouted to other bus stops, which can be confusing and irritating. Rarely timely, rarely timely and proper notice gets to the customer about the changes often resulting in people waiting at their traditional stops. There's no clarification on which stop is pick up and drop off when these certain events happen. Why is the customer the last one to know? Thirdly, I have concerns about the cleanliness of each bus. I asked the supervisor if the buses get cleaned and set aside, and she told me they get cleaned every night. I believe that PRT needs to take into consideration that the fabric on the seats needs to be taken off due to pee accidents, drink spillage, food, and other factors. Lastly, I strongly feel that PRT should want to improve more moving forward. An apology won't fix it, but recognition and changes will. I hope that PRT really acts fast but smart and takes the issues that were discussed today and other meetings into consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, did Bonnie Fan show up? Yes. Good morning. My name is Bonnie Fan. Um, I was a former data scientist in the performance management department at the Chicago Transit Authority, uh, where I worked on service reliability, uh, dynamic schedule tools for operations, and incident management. Um, and currently, you know, as as you've heard from riders who have been stranded, who have been um, receiving form customer communication and notice, um, as well as um, hearing about drivers working in main long shifts, um, working over nine hour runs um, with break times being removed. Um, this is creating an untenable situation for everyone and especially um, this creating unworkable conditions that are contributing to the high attrition rate for PRT bus drivers. This then exacerbates the current bus driver shortage, making it harder and harder to fill service. And though this bus driver shortage that PRT face is one that um, all agencies nationwide are facing, there are agencies um, that are putting in creative solutions to actually try to address this shortage. Um, and it, it, this, this time calls for PRT to also implement their own creative interventions um, around scheduling, around incident management, customer communications, and driver recruitment. Um, not around writing schedules that squeeze at home breaks out of schedules and recovery times and causing drivers to work several hours over time. There's a balance in giving riders adequate critical service um, without creating unworkable conditions. 
UNT should be having scholar schedulers for, for ride-alongs um, and looking carefully at the schedules to make sure that they are actually workable and that they reflect the running times that it takes to complete them. Um, they should be offering increasing pay, offering incentives to new drivers, flexible schedules to recruit, um, as other agencies are. Um, for example, in SFMTA's Meeting Reliability Working Group, they coordinated with other uh, governmental agencies, such as human resources, to um, uh, human service to, to bolster recruitment and testing, um, the Department of Real Estate to increase training facilities, Department of Public Health to expedite medical clearances, um, and worked with the city, the city city drive program, which um, accelerated CDL licenses. Um, overall, PRT's track record of working intergovernmentally seems to be uh, lacking in terms of not offering much public uh, support, even to the low income fare program. Um, not even putting like public notices on, you know, the, the buses themselves where there's plenty of space. Um, overall, this this service crisis hurts everyone, and so it hurts folks who need the bus to get to work, to find work, and improving it should be a concern for everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, now for our last speaker, and apparently no other old Mr. Newton, I believe you can Okay, I mean, we'll count the comments with everybody. Happy Thanksgiving and whatever other holiday you celebrate. <laughs> <laughs> um, so at least a happy New Year. Okay. Thank you. Oh, sure. You are. <laughs>